Good. All right. Uh, welcome to Kamiak High School and tonight's Fall Sport Parent Night. Um, if you're still coming in, just go ahead and grab a seat. That's great. Uh, my name is Sean Monica. I'm one of the assistant principals here and also the athletic director. Um, and also um, uh, oversee special education, PE health, a little bit of CTE, and then my alphabet range for the last names of A through G. So if your son or daughter has the last name A through G, then I'm their administrator by alpha. Um, welcome. It's so great to have people here. Uh, last year, I think I did a Zoom recording. I was lonely in my office. It was probably dark. Uh, there was thunder and lightning outside. It was just awful. So I'm super pumped that we're able to have a fall sport parent meeting in person. I'm really excited that we're going to have normal fall sports uh, to start this year. Uh, last year, we didn't get going, obviously, with sports until about February 22nd. And then we had really condensed six-week seasons. And so this year, uh, we're really optimistic about the school year. We're really um, optimistic about our sports season. Um, our kids and our coaches and our families really need athletics. And so I'm so grateful that you guys are here tonight to help support Kamiak. Um, I've got some uh, important people to kind of acknowledge and introduce to start things off. And so some are in the gym, and uh, I'll have them give a wave. Some are not here. Uh, they're probably still finishing up practice. Uh, so our head football coach is uh, Coach BT, Bryant Thomas. He's also our dean of students, a great resource for our kids. Um, in girls' soccer, we have Costa Pitharoulis. Uh, girls' swim, right over here we have Coach Chris Erickson. Let's give Coach Chris Erickson a nice round of applause. And uh, in volleyball, we have head coach Jason Davis. Jason, will you give a nice wave? Wow, he must have planted people in the crowd. That was a nice, warm reception. Um, boys tennis, we have Coach Gilbert. Is Coach Gilbert with us yet? Uh, nope. So Coach Jeff Gilbert. Uh, coach Charlie LeWarn in cross country. Let's give Coach Charlie LeWarn a nice round of applause. And then also on our fall sports season, we have unified bowling. Uh, coach Georgia McClaskey is our unified sports coach. She's not here tonight. She's going to do something a little bit separate because they get rolling a little bit after the other fall sports do. Um, another really important person that makes everything go is uh, my athletic secretary, Ms. Shigamatsu. She's not here tonight, but we're live streaming. So let's give her a nice round of applause just in case she's live streaming. Uh, Michelle is amazing. She's uh, super responsive. So if you ever need any help with clearance or questions about anything to do with the athletic department, uh, she really helps support our kids and families and coaches and um, is a real true partner for uh, my work. And then uh, I have another really important person that's vital to our athletic department, and that's our athletic coordinator, Ms. Kim Comstock. Let's give Kim a nice round of applause. Uh, so Kim comes to us from Blanchett High School um, a couple years ago, and last year was really strange with COVID and the shutdown and everything, so uh, we're really looking forward to more of a normal year and uh, really making sure our athletic department is serving our student athletes, our coaches, and our families. Our principal is Mr. Stephen Shirtliff. Uh, Stephen might be out there. Let's give him a round of applause. So Stephen is uh, a Kamiak alumni, class of 95, and uh, is a big proponent of extracurricular activities, getting kids engaged, and so he's an awesome support um, for our work in the athletic department and uh, a great guy. So make sure that you say hi to him as you see him around at different games along the way. I'm going to change the slide, I hope. All right, hold on one second, home audience. All right, um, something usually will go wrong with technology. Hey, let's give Coach BT a nice round of applause. He missed his earlier. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so several years ago, when I first became athletic director, we uh, wanted to establish what it is that we want to be about at Kamiak High School. We wanted something to focus on. So we got community feedback, we got student athlete feedback, we got coaches feedback, and we developed a mission statement that really has become a touchstone for our athletic department, um, how we evaluate programs, how we hire new coaches. And um, we really wanted to make sure that our focus was giving kids a great high school student athletic experience, making sure we were doing things the right way and that wins were a byproduct of doing things the right way. So we took all of that feedback and condensed it down into a mission statement. And um, it goes like this. Uh, our mission is working together to help student athletes develop into leaders in the classroom, the community, and on the athletic field through high expectations, accountability, encouragement, perseverance, and determination. So in a normal year, perseverance and determination are really key attributes and characteristics for ourselves, for our coaches, for our young people. Um, I think student athletics provides a great opportunity and a unique opportunity to be able to overcome real and perceived adversity. So that adversity comes from kind of inner conflict. It might come from competition against a teammate. It might come from questions or concerns that we have about our role on the team. It might come from our relationships with um, our classmates. It might come with um, the dynamic of the overall program. And it also comes from our competitors. So right now, um, being in high school, our student athletes have a great support system. They've got teachers, counselors, administrators. They've got coaches. And so now is the perfect time to help our kids overcome real and perceived adversity by making sure that we're empowering them to have difficult conversations, making sure that they are starting to take more and more control and having more and more responsibility about their grades, about their attendance, about how they communicate with their coaches, because someday soon, they're gonna have to have difficult conversations and advocate for themselves with a whole host of people. They're gonna have to do that with their bosses, with their coworkers, with their future in-laws maybe. So we wanna make sure that our kids have great skills and the ability to be comfortable enough, confident enough to have difficult conversations, to advocate for themselves at the appropriate time and in the appropriate way that builds on existing relationships and doesn't tear those relationships down or damages those. So that's really our goal. As you can see all around us, We've been very successful in terms of wins and losses from top to bottom in all of our different programs. Uh, one of the things that we really like to focus on is that we won't really know the true measure of our success this season until five or ten years from now. So that's when we'll be able to find out what Kamiak has done in partnership with you in terms of the kinds of graduates that we're producing and kind, in terms of the kinds of people we're producing and contributing citizens of the Mukilteo community or wherever our kids go off to. Um, so we love it when kids come back and coach for us. We're super lucky. We have many alumni that have come back and taught at Kamiak High School. We have many alumni that come back and coach for us. And uh, we love it when our former players have lifelong relationships with our coaching staff. So we're very, very fortunate at Kamiak to have a coaching staff that wants to invest into young people, wants to do things the right way, and knows that wins are a byproduct of sticking to our mission statement and by making sure that we're giving kids a great high school athletic experience. All right, we'll see if we can get this next slide to go. All right, nice. Okay, so the big, um, the big question mark right now, right, is what is the latest DOH guidance? Um, I really appreciate everybody wearing a face covering uh, tonight and making sure that we're kind of three to six feet away from those people who aren't in our household. So those things are in place right now. So uh, system-wide for our, our schools, everybody who's in an indoor facility has a face covering. Um, so that's a requirement. So during the school day, that's what you'll see. For student athletics, it's a little bit different. Um, for our fall sports like volleyball and girls swim, when they're indoors and they're actively training or actively competing, the latest DOH guidance is that they can remove the face covering while they're doing that. And then when they aren't actively doing something, then they put that face covering back on. So in locker rooms, in the training room, in the hallways, coming into the gym complex, people should be having a face covering on. And that's the expectation. We want to minimize 
transmission or possibilities for transmission as much as possible. Um, right now, for outdoor sports, for people who are actively participating again in practices and in games, um, we don't require a face covering. For outdoor sports, if you're not right next to somebody for a prolonged period of time, the current guidance is, is that you don't have to wear a mask. Um, our sports programs are starting to go a little bit above and beyond that. I don't know if you guys saw the paper today, but Lake Stevens High School had a COVID exposure. And so, unfortunately, they're going to have to miss their first two games of football because they didn't have enough athletes on their football team that had been vaccinated. So that means they're in a 10 to 14 day quarantine situation. So unfortunately, they had to forfeit or not play their first two games. So our coaches um, are going to do a great job of making sure that our kids are safe in all of the areas where they have to wear a face covering. There are certain times when they don't have to wear a face covering, um, but we want to make sure that we have a great system in place for when we aren't wearing one, we have, at, have our mask or our face covering readily accessible um, so that we can do a nice job in protecting ourselves, our families, our teammates, and so we can keep the seasons going. Um, for spectators, for both indoor and outdoor sports, right now the Muckleteal School District guidance uh, for indoor sports is the same as the DOH guidance. For outdoor sports, it's a little bit more restrictive. Again, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect our community and our, our students. So uh, even for outdoor uh, athletic competitions at a football game, soccer game, um, those kinds of things, we're going to expect that our spectators wear a face covering because you're in and amongst people and groups that are maybe not in your household. We want to try to maintain that three-foot distance from folks not in our household, but we're also going to wear those face coverings, um, and that's the latest DOH guidance on that. All right, next slide. Um, so... Face coverings will be required on buses, so when we are on transportation, our transportation system does a great job of making sure that windows are, are popped open, we have lots of cross ventilation, they sanitize, they have hygiene, um, we make sure that we're doing everything that we can to stay safe while we're transporting to and from. Um, last year, we uh, started out the season in February with only one person per seat. Uh, this year, the guidance has changed where there's not that one person per seat uh, expectation. Um, there was never really any DOH guidance around transportation to and from school or to and from away events, but Muckleteal School District went above and beyond, especially as we were just beginning to enter into sports last year. Um, so part of it is we feel very confident that we have safe transportation, even with more than one person per seat. And then we also... Um, like all school districts around us are really struggling to have enough bus drivers and buses to fulfill all of our needs in terms of routes for both school and extracurricular activities. Um, I mentioned face coverings are required in training room and locker rooms. Locker room access, we want to try and limit as much as possible. We don't want a lot of kids just hanging out there uh, changing. We want to make sure our face coverings are always on, obviously. But whenever we can, for a practice for, or for a game, we want to show up ready to go. That was kind of our mantra last year. That was a little bit easier to do because uh, when we first started sports, everybody was still in distance learning, so you were coming from home. But now this year, everybody's going to be back, and so we're going to have to have our stuff most likely at the school uh, for practices, maybe for some games with some later departure times or maybe later arrival times for home contests. We want to show up dressed and ready to go, if at all possible, whenever possible, in the locker rooms. Uh, we're going to continue to practice social distancing, hand washing, sanitation, hygiene, face coverings, vaccinations will all help us keep uh, students, staff, and families safe. Um, you guys may have noticed um, the governor made a proclamation that all public school employees uh, need to be fully vaccinated by October 18th. And so that extends to officials, that extends to coaches, that extends to game workers. And so just so you know, we're working towards that goal. Um, and then last year, this mantra was pretty common. We don't want to be the reason, I don't want to be the reason that uh, our team doesn't have a season, right? So we can do everything perfectly by the book here at school and it could all go away if we aren't making responsible choices outside of school. So that means what social gatherings we're attending, what large events we're attending, 
um, our face uh, covering kind of discipline in different situations. So as much as we possibly can, we want to make sure that our kids are making great choices about um, what they're doing outside of campus because obviously um, the Delta variant is very contagious and we want to limit our exposure as much as possible. And no matter where that exposure takes place, it could impact uh, a team or a program in a very detrimental way. So it's going to take all of us collectively to be making great decisions as we go through the season to maintain that and not end up in a situation where we have to lose games or lose seasons. All right, um, so here is some kind of non-COVID stuff that is always um, important for us to focus on. So if we take a look at um, what's expected of, of me as a student athlete at Kamiak High School. So academically, um, I need to be passing five out of six classes at all times. Um, so there's initial eligibility coming into the fall sports season, and then we do continuous grade checks every three to six weeks throughout the fall sports season. Um, for fall sports, the second semester grades where we ended last year is our initial grade check that we do for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. If you're a freshman, you kind of get a clean slate coming into the fall sports season. So even if you had a hiccup last year in eighth grade and you didn't do great in second semester, the WIA rule is that all freshmen have a clean slate so that we can get freshmen engaged and active in activities and they don't have to sit out five weeks on WIA probation or something like that. So that's a great thing. Um, we typically do a continuous grade check at the end of each month. So our teachers have grades accurately in cumulative, and then we take a look at what's in there in cumulative. And then if they're meeting that standard, five out of six, that's great. Um, something that's new this year, since we've altered the academic standard uh, to be more in compliance with WIA, if your son or daughter doesn't meet the academic standard, then it's seven days of suspension um, from contests. So they can still practice, they can still participate. But from the time of that grade check, if they aren't passing five out of six classes on all of their continuous grade checks, then unfortunately they would be suspended from competition for seven calendar days. So it's really, really crucial that our athletes are taking care of business in the classroom, and that feeds right back into our mission statement. Um, there's a ton of support at Kamiak High School for academic and social-emotional. Uh, so individual teacher and coach assistants, academic coaches, CAP program, school counseling services, student support advocate, drug intervention specialist, and mental health counseling services. So again, we've got a ton of resources and support to help your son or daughter be successful not only as an athlete, but as a student, and uh, growing and developing as a human as well. Okay, attendance. So the basics for attendance is you have to be here at least half a day. Um, so that's three out of six periods. Um, all of your absences have to be excused, and so typically to excuse an absence, you might get 24 to 48 hours if you're a student that wasn't in season. We really need that note, phone call, email, communication to the attendance office the day of so that we know that that absence was excused. If the absence isn't excused by the end of the day, then our athletic secretary is trying to communicate with teachers, with coaches, saying, oh, geez, it looks like... Johnny wasn't here, fourth, fifth, and sixth period. Um, unbeknownst to us, maybe he had a dental appointment. Um, so we need to make sure uh, if your son or daughter is going to be absent that we get that note, phone call, email right away the day of. Um, hopefully this doesn't become an issue, but if your son or daughter has any discipline, like anything with the word suspension attached to it, um, then they aren't eligible to practice or compete that day when they are on suspension. So that could be in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, and so um, just something for you to be aware of. And hopefully we don't have anything like that uh, happen this year. Um, one of the greatest days that we have at Kamiak High School is when we get to celebrate with families and with student athletes and with teachers and coaches. And that's when we get to send off our student athletes to have a chance to play collegiately. So here is a picture of Coach West, myself, and Carson Tuttle. Carson was like all-world basketball, all-state, his junior and senior year. Uh, led us to a top eight finish um, several years ago to a district championship. He's down at uh, Texas A&M Commerce City. Um, so this is a great celebration and I think um, something to be very, very proud of. Not only can a student athlete qualify academically, but they're also uh, 
competitive enough and skilled enough to play at that next level. So that's really a great celebration. If your son or daughter has that chance, then please let our athletic department know. We're always asking our coaches, like, hey, who's going to get a chance to play at the next level? And then normally we would have a nice um, get-together in the staff lounge, and we have refreshments, and we celebrate kids, and we show them a lot of love and show families a lot of love. So make sure that if your son or daughter gets that opportunity that you let us know. All right, uh, multi-sport athletes. We love multi-sport athletes at Kamiak High School. Um, whatever your son or daughter's favorite sport is, whatever they think they want to specialize in, I guarantee you they're going to become a better athlete if they play more than that one sport. Um, I think studies have shown over the course of a lot of years now that overtraining in one specific sport uh, not only can wear you down mentally to where you think that the thing that you used to love becomes a job, but it also wears out your body. And uh, we see a higher frequency of injuries and um, those kinds of things for students who specialize. I think being a good athlete uh, means that you have the poise and the confidence to feel like you're going to be successful in any athletic situation, no matter what that is. So if you are confident that you're going to make it in fourth and goal when the game is on the line, then you're going to be able to sink that clutch free throw in the fourth quarter with no time left. Same thing if you're in the batter's box and the count's three and two, two outs, bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh, and your team needs a clutch hit. All of those different athletic situations are going to make you more successful in maybe that sport that you love the most or that sport maybe that you specialized in. You get a great experience being around different people, different teammates, different coaches. You get different ideas. Uh, we also have also found that when student athletes are engaged in season, they have better grades, better attendance, better mental health, better physical health. So it's a win-win all the way around. And then as parents, as a byproduct, when your kid is in season, they will clean their room, they won't talk back, they will do the dishes. And so it's just the total package of good things that happen when your son or daughter is a multi-sport athlete. Uh, we really celebrate that at Kamiak. Um, when I first became athletic director, we only had two three-sport lettermen. By 1819, we had 23. And then uh, you can see in 1819, we had 61 two-sport lettermen. So we really want to build that up. We want to make sure that our coaches are sharing athletes and making it okay for people to play multiple sports. Sometimes that gets tricky in the summertime, uh, but it's really, really critical for the health of our athletic department and for the health of our young people. Um, so if your son or daughter comes home and says, I can't play football because my basketball coach is going to cut me if I'm not at every single thing in the summer. They are telling lies, right? Um, our basketball coach and our football coach will work hand in hand to make it work. Obviously, the next season that's coming up needs to take the priority, right, in the fall. Um, but we'll make it work, and our coaches are very flexible. Um, they're all advocates of multi-sport athletes, so please do that. Uh, here's a picture of the day um, when we recognize our three-sport letterman at the very end of the year. They get a special patch for their letterman's jacket, which is really cool. So this is one of our uh, fun days that we have out in the grassy knoll. Uh, the young lady who's um, laying uh, to the side there on the bottom, that's Allie De La Cruz. She was a state championship wrestler, and she earned 12 varsity letters. So she was a three-sport letterman all four years. So a very amazing accomplishment. Um, when that happens, it's only happened twice, I think, in the school's history. Uh, Tyler Adcock and uh, Allie De La Cruz were both 12-sport lettermen, and they get the Excalibur Award, which is a really cool honor at Senior Awards Night. So something to shoot for, uh, the Excalibur Award. All right, um, picking back up with transportation. So in the Mukilteo School District, we always provide transportation to away events. Um, so that's our duty, that's our responsibility, it keeps kids safe, and so um, we always provide that. If there are situations where a parent or guardian needs to transport their son or daughter to an away contest, there's a form for that and a process for that, so you can ask your coach and just say, hey, um, we can't make it next Thursday, uh, by the time the bus leaves, uh, we'll meet you at the game, uh, what do I need to do? And so there's a form for that. Um, the coach will sign off on it. You and your son or daughter will sign off on it. I'll sign off on it, and then that way we're good to go. So that allows you to transport your son or daughter to and from. 
Let's say your son or daughter rides to an away contest and it's way up in Oak Harbor, right? And um, your coach is okay with parents taking their kids home from the game because it's late. Um, you got to get to the next thing or whatever the case may be. We also have a process where you can contact your coach at the game and say, hey, I'm going to take uh, Jimmy and um, just wanted to let you know that. And then we have a little sign-out sheet um, for you. And so that's the process. So unless there's an extenuating circumstance, um, then the expectation is, is that uh, kids are riding to and from. Obviously, we want to provide some, provide some flexibility within that. And so we have a process and forms for, for, you, be, for you to be able to do those things. Okay. All right. Ah, here we go. All right, I have a very special guest. Um, He's the brand new KABC president. Let's give him a nice, warm welcome to the podium, Mr. Stephen Bullock. Good evening, everybody. So I don't have much to say. Uh, KABC is a, uh, a booster club, or Kamiak Athletic Booster Club, and uh, we serve as the trustee for all of the Kamiak fundraising for our athletics program. Um, not to mention, we do our own concessions to try and raise money for our athletic program. Uh, we provide all the sports, 23 sports? 23 sports. So we provide their, their fundraising along with, or funds for their, their program. So, uh, so that way, if they need something, uh, the coach can ask us for a grant and we mow it over and provide the, the grant for equipment that is needed. Um, some of the things that we've provided in previous years, um, golf bags for the boys' golf team, new football helmets, uh, pole vaults for the track team, uniforms for the boys' tennis team, and the list goes on. Uh, but we want to come out and convey that we need memberships. And memberships are run from $15, or sorry, $25, up to 75 or more, or whatever you choose. Um, and what that membership does is it, uh, it allows us to give out scholarships. And uh, last year we did $7,000 in scholarships, and we weren't able to run concessions because school was shut down. So by having members, it allows us to do that type of stuff. Uh, we also try and get uh, memberships and or people helping at our concession stands. Um, as a parent, you'll be broken up into certain areas later on this evening, and we'll talk directly to you, hopefully. Some of us will get around to you and ask you to become a member and sign up for our concession stands, um, either indoor or outdoor, or wherever it may be throughout the sports season. Uh, so that's pretty much what KABC does. Um, so if you have any questions on how to become a membership or how to become a member through the K or through the Kamiak website, there's a link on there to KABC, and it's an online process. It's pretty easy, and it's worth the fifteen dollars or whatever it may be. Um, I will say that you also receive a, depending on what level of membership you get, you get a uh, stamp card that allows you to get popcorn or water or something at our concession stands. Um, I think that's basically all I have to say. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, yeah, KABC does an amazing job supporting uh, the athletic department here at Kamiak. And so, um, you know, as you guys may imagine, last year we expended a bunch of money to get sports going and doing all that, officials, game workers, and everything. And, um, you know, we didn't have any spectators for a while. And then when we did have spectators, we didn't sell tickets or admission. 
And so we're trying to make up for lost time. So KABC is a great resource, a supplemental resource for our budgets to make everything go and to provide, again, a great experience for our kids. Um, if you're thinking about volunteering, it's a great experience to get to know your uh, uh, son and daughter's parents. Um, it creates kind of a bond. Um, you guys enjoy the high school experience doing those things together. We're always looking for volunteers. I know that KABC is also looking for new board members. So many of our board members have stayed on because they're so passionate about uh, doing good work, even though they don't have a student at Kamiak right now. So Stephen's in that same boat. He's still the president, and he doesn't have a kid here right now. And so that says a lot about the volunteerism and the service that they're trying to provide. So um, try and become a member. Try and volunteer to uh, do concessions if you can. All that money comes right back to benefiting your son or daughter. Um, they also provide really cool scholarships for seniors who have participated in student athletics um, at the end of their time at Kamiak. And so, again, a great opportunity for you guys to get involved um, in a fun way. All right, uh, the next person I'm going to introduce... Um, he was so good at his job last year that they promoted him to the Everett Community College athletic trainer. And we're super sad about that here at Kamiak, but very happy for him and very well-deserved promotion. Um, so he's going to tell you a little bit about athletic training and IRG, who provides our athletic training services. We're kind of in between trainers right now. We're trying to find a hire. And so as a result of that, we're kind of piecemealing some coverage here. Um, and so we hope to have someone in place soon. And so we're working really hard on that. So um, without further ado, help me welcome our athletic trainer, Matt. Hi, everyone. Thank, thank you, Sean, for the great intro. That was awesome. Um, so, yeah, um, with um, the athletic training service this year, I just kind of wanted to give up just a little touch on things. Um, since I will be helping out the, here this year until we do get someone in here full time for coverage. In the meantime, we will have games covered for the student athletes. So that is nothing to worry about there. I do see on the slide there that Sean did put up there that the IRG Muckleteal Clinic and all of our IRG clinics do offer free injury screens. So if you feel like you can't get an athletic trainer for whatever reason at that time, they're always a good contact to reach out as well. And I kind of did want to go over just a little bit of kind of the return to play concussion stuff just because it is always good to touch on it. So if uh, your son or daughter does suffer a concussion, it's good to know that once we as athletic trainers diagnose it, we're going to, we have to wait until their, your son or daughter is completely symptom free. After that, they're going to get a clearance from a medical doctor that's trained in concussion and brain specialist. And then after that, it's a five-day return to play pro uh, protocol. After the, once they clear that, those five days without any problems, then they're able to return to play. And so if there's any questions about anything when it comes to this, when it comes to who's going to be covering our games, there will be a lot of fluctuation in the beginning of the season here, but our hope is to kind of get it settled in by the October, mid-September here. So any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll still be at IRG, still be helping out, or reach out to Sean as well. So thanks, guys. All right, so again, student safety is a paramount importance to all of our coaches, and so they'll be in regular contact with you when we have an athletic trainer on site and hopefully a permanent replacement. They'll be in close contact with you. And so um, return to play protocols are, are something we take very seriously. So any serious injuries we document, um, and then we give you uh, lots of paperwork to work with uh, your son or daughter's physician if there's a concussion or suspected concussion or any injury that's going to require follow-up medical attention. And so we want to be very, very careful that when your son or daughter comes back that they're fully cleared, 100%, ready to go, um, so that um, that injury is taken care of and fully healed. And so we wouldn't want to risk um, your son or daughter's health or well-being long-term. Um, so Matt does a great job for us, and IRG has been a great support. And so please let us know if there's anything while we're kind of in this interim period um, coaches, I think, are getting questions like, hey, where's our athletic trainer? Uh, what's going on? They were usually here during our practices. Uh, so this year, kind of just so you know, we, we kind of have an athletic trainer on site in between 3 and 5 p.m. Uh, during the week, and then we're getting coverages for games for our normal sports of volleyball, girls' soccer, and football. 
Um, so if your son or daughter needs uh, to see an athletic trainer and they aren't on site while um, your son or daughter is here practicing or, or playing a game, we can always follow up the next day and make an appointment um, with our trainer that's on site. Or of course, you can call ahead and, and get into the IRG clinic too, just as long as you give them a heads up. And then we'll continue to work uh, as, as hard as we can getting a replacement. Okay, uh, sportsmanship. So um, this is kind of the next phase, thinking about our mission statement. So s sportsmanship is sort of three different phases. So our coaches are expected to lead by example and emphasize sportsmanship with their teams, right? So it all starts by leading with example. Our student athletes are expected to represent themselves, the team, the coach, their school, and their families well by exhibiting good sportsmanship at practice, at games, uh, out in the community, in the hallways, in the commons. And so that's an expectation we have for our kids. Our student body and our community are representing our high school as well, and so we expect them to demonstrate good sportsmanship at all sporting events. So as you guys know, you guys have been to a ton of games um, here at the high school. So high school sports is a little bit different than going to a Seahawk game or to a Kraken game or to a Mariners game. Um, there's a little bit more, I guess, latitude in terms of how boisterous the fans get and maybe some of their comments and some of how they react to a call or to an opposing player. Uh, here at Kamiak High School, we uh, believe firmly that student athletics is an extension of the classroom. And so we really need your help and the help of our student body to make sure that wherever Kamiak goes, whether we have a home game or whether we're at an away game, that everyone comes away from that experience feeling positive. Um, that when other schools see a Kamiak crowd, they think to themselves, man, they really have it going. Uh, they, they've got a good thing happening at Kamiak, both with their student body and their parent community, and everybody's positive. And when they root, they root for Kamiak, and they never root against the opposing team. They never single out any of the opposing players. They never single out the officials, all of those things. Because it only takes one small mistake or one instance of someone losing their cool in a crowd that can cast the whole school and the whole school community in a negative light. And I think we as, as a school community, as parents, as a student body, and as student athletes and coaches, we work way too hard to have one person kind of cast our entire operation in a negative light. Last year, you saw during COVID times, it, it, strange times when spectators were allowed, there were so many different examples of spectators saying awful, horrible, disparaging things to players, to officials, to opposing coaches. And so we would never want that to happen uh, in our gyms or when we're traveling. And that really takes a combined community effort to be able to do that. When you walked in, you got, um, or you can on your way out, if you didn't grab it on your way in, there's some Muckleteal School District spectator expectations. Um, just two days ago, we met with our jumpsuit spirit squad. So these are seniors, juniors, and sophomores who are seen as leaders within our school, and they're going to help us uh, make sure that our student body is doing great things when we're at games. Um, I think too often uh, there's sort of this thing where people feel like they have to get hyped for a game and they have to get in the head of the opposing player and talk about, um, you know, their shoes or, you know, their car or, you know, fill in the blank of what they'll talk to an opposing player about. We just can't go there. Um, not only is it the wrong thing to do, it, it doesn't meet our mission statement, but it also um, is counterproductive. Uh, research has shown that when you boo, when you get on the opposing team, or if you get on the officials, it actually has the exact opposite effect of trying to support your team win the game. They have found that when crowds are supportive and positive of their own players and root for their team, um, then that's when the crowd can really have an influence on the game. And so please help us do that. Um, yeah. Uh, it's really, really critical um, that we do that. And again, that all starts as, with our coaches. Our student athletes have that expectation and uh, our parents as well. Lastly, there is a crisis in youth sports and high school sports of not having enough officials. And so if you're thinking about becoming a an official or if you have that ability in your work schedule to become an official, we are really, really struggling to have officials be able to work high school games. Um, 
we just sent something out through final forms where the WIAA and WOA are doing um, kind of a campaign to try and get high school kids to be officials for middle school games. So that will free up the adults to do the high school games. So if you have that ability, please do that. And that kind of circles back to sportsmanship. Most officials don't make it past three years. Um, only two out of ten return after three years. And their number one thing why they don't come back is verbal abuse from spectators and from fans and from players and coaches. So again, if we want to be able to play and have games, we need officials. Um, are they going to make bad calls? Yeah, absolutely. They're going to make calls. They're going to miss things. They're going to make mistakes. But again, we have to be able to overcome that adversity as players, as fans, as coaches. And if we don't have officials, then the game can't even happen to begin with. So please, please, please help us uh, get more officials, help us keep officials, and help make sure that when Kamiak has home games or when we travel on the road that everybody comes away from that experience having positive feelings about how we do things here at Kamiak. All right, uh, next slide. Um, so also as part of the clearance process, going back to our mission statement, is the athletic code of conduct. So being involved in extracurricular activities comes with it more responsibility. So that means that 24-7, um, 365, we expect our student-athletes to be drug, alcohol, tobacco, vape-free. And um, unfortunately, I've been here for 13 years overall, 12 years as athletic director. I've had to have lots of difficult conversations with student-athletes and their parents when students make poor choices in that area. Um, we also hold them accountable for their behavior in the school building um, and out in the community. So, you know, if, if we have a teacher who has an issue that leads to discipline, then sometimes that leads to loss of eligibility to compete in games. Um, academic dishonesty is kind of one of the prime examples of that. When we have an academic dishonesty issue in our classrooms, then that usually pairs with a loss of eligibility to be able to compete in athletic contests. Um, so please make sure that we're helping our kids proactively make great decisions. I think as humans, our behavior can change or we can modify our behavior or make good choices because we're afraid of a consequence. I would rather kind of flip that coin and say that the athletic code of conduct is a great incentive to make good choices proactively and positively so that your son or daughter feel empowered to make good choices in their social group, that you as parents feel empowered to make sure that collectively as groups of parents with kids on the same team, you guys are making good choices and having good teamwork about the kinds of things that your sons and daughters are doing outside of school. And so it's really a community effort and a partnership with the school. We want to keep everybody eligible. We don't want to take away games. Um, but also, having that Kamiak on your chest carries with it more responsibility. You're representing yourself, your team, your coaching staff, your family, your school. And so, again, we need to make sure that we're doing a great job in those areas. All right, um, and that includes cyberspace. Um, so, uh, good luck trying to manage and oversee that. Um, obviously, as a school, we can't uh, monitor social media. Um, but I think you guys as parents can give good guidance. We give good guidance here as a teaching staff and as a coaching staff. And so again, if something comes to our attention, if something is forwarded to us, if a picture is sent to us, then we're compelled to follow up with that. We don't go looking for those kinds of things out on social media, but if they come to us, then we have to uh, follow our process and make sure that we're doing our due diligence. All right. Um, so positive team bonding. So again, no initiations at Kamiak. We have positive, inclusive, welcoming traditions at Kamiak. Uh, we never want to put a young athlete in a position where they feel like they can't say no to something or if they feel uncomfortable being put in some sort of position uh, in part of a, an initiation. So we don't have any initiations. We don't have any hazing at Kamiak High School. We do have positive team bonding. And so it's really, really critical that if you guys hear of anything that feels like it's, oh, I'm not so sure about that, you need to call the coach, you need to call me directly, and make sure that we're um, offering a safe and supportive environment within our teams, both while they're here at school and also outside of school. Um, the worst thing in the world is for, on a team, a bunch of different cliques to, sh to form, and that some people are in the in crowd and some people are in the out crowd. 
right? That's going to not meet our mission statement. It's going to harm those people who are in the out crowd. And it's going to make us less competitive and less successful. So again, as student athletes and when they get out into the world, they're going to be on all sorts of teams with all sorts of different people. And we've got to figure out a way to work collaboratively and collegially no matter um, if we're best friends with the person or we just know them from the team. And so it's really, really important that we um, have a safe environment for our kids. Uh, here's a little bit more information on team bonding. Um, so you can see there um, uh, kind of the definition for what positive team bonding includes and what it doesn't include. Um, so we have great information there. Uh, we also have some... Um, board policy and some different things about potential consequences for anything that is harassment, intimidation, bullying, or hazing, or anything that kind of uh, even gets close to initiation. So again, we work really hard to make sure our kids are making great choices there. Okay. So healthy boundaries. Um, so th something about working together um, well to help kids be successful is maintaining healthy boundaries. So if you think about it, uh, one of the metaphors that I like to use is we can all finish the race if we stay in our lane, right? So players play, coaches coach, parents parent. Um, coaches would never want to come into a parent's lane and tell them how to parent. A player would never want to come into a coach's lane and tell them how to coach. And hopefully a parent would never want to try to come into a coach's lane and try to tell them how to coach. And so we have really healthy boundaries here at Kamiak High School, and that's very important to us. So thinking about our mission statement in overcoming real and perceived adversity, our kids can't overcome real and perceived adversity if our coaches and our parents aren't a unified front. Does that mean we always agree? Does that mean we never have disagreements? Does that mean we never have questions or concerns? Of course not. But with our student athletes, we are always a unified front. Otherwise that whole process of being able to have difficult conversations, of overcoming a difficult situation gets subverted. So that's really, really critical that we try to maintain that unified front as much as possible with our student athletes. Players are encouraged to initiate conversations with their coaches about how they can become better players, better teammates, and earn more playing time. So every student athlete wants to be the starter. Every student athlete wants to be all Wesco, all league, all area. Um, I think what's really critical is for parents and coaches to work together to make sure that all of the athletes on the team understand their role, value their role, and that they know that they're uh, valued on the team. And so that's key, no matter if that's the last person on the bench or the starter. And so again, the success of the season, the success of that season, takes all of the members of the team, not just the starters, not just uh, the people who get to play, but it takes everybody to be able to make that happen. Uh, here is some, some things that uh, have come up in my experience. Uh, so this is a common misconception or an urban legend or a myth. So it says, if I raise a question or concern, then my child will be punished by the coach. So my only recourse is to send an anonymous parent letter. So please don't do that. Um, we welcome feedback. We welcome questions. We're going to be able to handle those questions and concerns in a positive way. We want our players to be initiating those conversations to begin with. Um, but please don't ever feel like you are limited to not saying anything and just holding on to anger, holding on to resentment. Please know that an anonymous parent letter is not a way to actually get the change that you are seeking. It's not an actual way to positively give input in a respectful way so that we can actually evaluate what changes we need to make if we need to make a change. Um, retaliation would never be tolerated here. That would be against our mission statement. That would be against our educational mission as a school. Uh, so please know that would never happen. Um, and then questions and concerns are a learning opportunity. Um, in those kinds of meetings, and I've been in a lot of them, my role is to be an advocate for the student athlete, an advocate for the parent, and an advocate for the coach. And so I'm advocating for all three of those um, different, maybe competing interests. 
and our hope is to all get back on the same page for the benefit of the student athlete. But we've got to balance the health of the program and also the health of the individual at the same time. All right, so here is something I like to show. So as you get older, it gets more competitive, right? So think about this. If Kamiak's a school of 2,200 kids, um, let's say there's 1,100 boys out of the 2,200. If I'm on the baseball team, I'm one of 20 out of 2,200 boys, or excuse me, 1,100 boys that made the baseball team. Um, if I'm a starter, I'm, you know, 9 out of 20. So think how difficult it is if you've been a starter your whole entire life through club, community, and all those things, and then high school becomes more competitive. The pyramid gets smaller at the top. Um, at the varsity level, there's less and less playing time to be had. So if I'm the starting second baseman on the baseball team, I'm the best second baseman out of 1,100 boys. Um, if I'm the backup second baseman, I'm still a pretty darn good baseball player, right? And so that's difficult because I think as student athletes and growing up, you have a vision of what your high school athletics experience is going to be like. And so sometimes um, that becomes difficult, and that's when we really rely upon great communication and kids and parents um, really being a unified front with us. So you can see there, um, high school coaches determine playing time based upon attitude, effort, skill, commitment, and leadership. So as we get older, people are going to be equally as talented as us, equally as smart as us. Um, and a lot of times it comes down to who can I trust in this position? Who can I rely upon? Who is more about the team than about themselves? So all of those characteristics that we're trying to cultivate are really important in those decision making. Um, in girls swim, it's really easy to figure out who the starter is based upon time. In football, it's a little bit more difficult to determine who the starting running back should be on any given game day because that's more subjective. So it varies and differs by the sport. All right, so we talked a little bit about this already, but a respectful communication process. So step one is your son or daughter to talk with the coach about a question or concern. If that doesn't resolve the issue, then step two is for the parent, the player, and the coach to all kind of have a conversation together. So often there's miscommunication or misinterpretation or someone's intention doesn't quite come across. Through no fault of anybody's, that triangulation of communication, we aren't all hearing the same thing or the intent of what is being said doesn't really come across. So step two is a great way to do that. And then step three, if step two is unsuccessful, then that's when I come in again and try and advocate for everybody's interest and then ultimately we're going to try to balance the health of the program with the needs of the student athlete. Okay, um, you guys have been a great audience. I really appreciate it. Um, so we are just about to break out into our breakout sessions where you're going to be able to learn a little bit more about your son or daughter's specific program. But I wanted to end where we started. So again, um, we want to do things the right way here. We want to give kids a great high school athletic experience, and we know that doing things the right way will yield wins. And, that, and by taking shortcuts or by having priorities in the wrong place, um, no matter what success we have on the court or the field or anything, won't be as valuable as making sure that we're partnering with you uh, to make Kamiak Athletics and your son and daughter's experience here uh, the best we can possibly make it. Um, so thank you so much again. Uh, I'm going to list the breakout sessions for you. So uh, football is going to stay in the main gym if we have folks here. Uh, cross country is going to be in portable 14. So Coach LaWarren will lead the charge there. That's just out the back of the gym in one of the first portables. Uh, girls soccer uh, will go to the commons. And so we have Coach Costa Pitharoulis right here. Hey, let's give Costa a round of applause. He missed his earlier. So Costa is going to um, go to the commons. So if you're a girls soccer parent, please follow him. Uh, boys tennis. We have Coach Gilbert over there. Let's give Coach Gilbert a round of applause. He missed his a little bit earlier. Uh, boys tennis will just be right out here in the gym foyer. And then volleyball is going to be in the Augs gym. So it's kind of out that way. And Coach Jason will lead the charge there. And then uh, Unified Bowling is going to do their, uh, their meeting a little bit different night. Um, Thank you again. 
any questions or concerns, if there's anything that I can do to help, please don't hesitate to let me know. Michelle, Kim, and I are great resources for you here. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thanks for joining us out there on YouTube.